What up, YouTube? It's your brother Trey. So, I had a request from one of my subscribers down below. Um, he told me to watch this video by TD Hip Hop Media. And um, I guess this guy named Rob Revolutions, Black Light Rev Rob, something like that. Um, and they're talking about Fresh and Fit and stuff like that. And so um, he suggested I look at this and he wanted to hear my opinion on it. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and listen to it. I've already listened to about 20 minutes of it, 15 minutes of it. So um, this is an interesting clip. Um, I'm going to just put a, a, a bunch of interesting clips in here that I... Um, you know, thought was interesting here. So, without further ado, let's get into the video, you guys. Or it's like, yo, even if you're, they don't have you in chains, they have these systems that's made for you not to win. So, if you don't win, you have a couple reasons. It's like the post game interview. I could say the A, B, C, D, and E why I did win. When most immigrants come over here, if you didn't win, you didn't do it. There's, you can't blame anything And this else. is the thing. As much as people want to say, oh, my God, America, we have racism, whatever. Yeah, I'm not saying that there weren't terrible things that didn't occur in the past. But what I am saying is that we have more opportunity here than other places. This is why immigrants come here, can't speak a lick of the language, can't do anything, and they're, they're able to make their way. Or if not, they have children here, and they force them to do something. My dad came here in the 80s, drove a cab in New York City in Brooklyn, got robbed plenty of times. Uh, uh, he got robbed multiple times. He got attacked. He went into a cast, whatever it is. He did all that to provide a better life for me and my mom. He wasn't going to let us fail. And now my sister in med school, you know, we're, we're, I, I, had done a, I was a special agent at Homeland Security for a while, and then I resigned, and now I'm doing a podcast thing. And I would not have this deep appreciation for the opportunities and situations I've had here in the United States had it not been my dad constantly telling me, you're in the best country in the world, you're in the United States, you could be back in Sudan, be in yeah. or whatever it is. And I was like, damn, I can't take this for granted. But here... In the States, people that have been here for a few generations, they don't understand the blessing that they have. So they're fucking pussies. Oh, well, I'm not where I want to be because of racism and because the man is holding me down. That was other fuck shit. No, bro. You're a fucking bitch. You're lazy. You are where... <laughs> you're not where you want to be because you're soft. Here's the thing, bro. Well, okay. So now you heard what he has to say, right? And now I'm tripping. Let me get back to the main screen. And what I want to say to that is this before I pass it over to Rob. So we, we heard that portion of it. I'm just going to say this much. Apparently, you know, black Americans, um, they're lazy, they're soft, they're the B word and they're the P word because they fall back so heavily, you know, on racism as the excuse for why they can't get ahead. And it's because of there are all these names that he called you, you know, well, I'll say this and I'm going to pass it to Rob real quick. If black Americans are lazy, soft, they're P-U-S-S-Ys and B-I-T-C-H's. If, if, if they're all that, right, then what does that say about your father? Hmm, Myron? What does that say about your father? Would your father not be all of those things for, after running away from the Sudan? I'm going to have to stop him right there. First off, no, his father is not going to be applicable to this same thing that you're talking about because he just said that his father is an immigrant. His father came from Sudan. So his father and Myron is specifically talking about African Americans. So off the rip, I get where he's trying to get at. I just wanted to make that clarification. Myron said his father is not from the States. Myron says the people that have been here in America for a few generations. His father, Myron's a first generation Sudanese African, or a Sudanese American person. So. He didn't listen to context on that point. But I get where he's trying to get at. And not, not be mad man enough, enough to do what the descendants of American slaves here did here in America? He wasn't mad enough to do that in the Sudan. And most folks aren't. That's why... I'm, I'm about to stop him there again. Like, that doesn't even make sense. You can't, you can't relate the two. I, I, I understand what he's trying to get at. Hold on, hold on. Let me, let me pause this. I'm, I'm gonna say this too. You 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 can't relate the two. And first off, here's this. I, I I get he's trying to do something right, but here's the you're not man enough rhetoric you hear all the time. Sid Sid Sudan does not have even a fraction of the GDP that America has. You can't possibly do the same things that the descendants of slaves in America did in suit in Sudan and, and create the same quality of life 
in Sudan. It just doesn't even make sense. They don't have the infrastructure for you to do half the shit that we can do. Hell, I bet you don't even have unemployment, let alone fucking credit. That That's not even a... You can't even compare the two. You, you can't compare the two. So, once again, before he continues talking, I, I, I do want to say this. I completely, 125% agree with Myron. And the reason why is because you do have got... To, I, I've dated... I've been in the African space for about five to six years now. And what they have to go through, and even looking at the MMA fighter Francis Ngannou, what they have to go through in these countries, I can't even fathom in my head how they fucking went through it. I, I, I can't, for the life of me, get that. I am making six figures in the comfort of my fucking home, smoking as much weed as I want, taking some drinks as whenever I want, have, inviting people over whenever I want. Now, granted, I can't go outside all the time when I want to. I have to stay here. But people are working way harder than I am, making a, a fourth of what I make. You know? What I mean, what I'm here to say is that that's only possible my type of lifestyle is only possible in first generation or first world countries. You can't do that in Sudan. And so this is possible. Someone of my skin complexion, black people can do amazing things in this country. And you're skating, you can't skate over that fact right there. Like that is something that is, that is absolutely true. The potential and the possibilities, even amidst the racism, is exponentially so much better than in most other countries in the fucking world. There's only a limited amount of countries that you can reach levels of and the quality of life that you can in America as a black male, like like you can. And this there's, I, I hate, I, I really do hate to see older brothers. I don't even know how this guy is. I hate to see older brothers ignorantly talk like this under the guise of wanting to help the black community and and this that and the third. This I I don't know if you guys are Christian or not, but this just reminds me of. Christians, when they want to try to defend religion, when you ask some le like legitimate questions that you know are founded upon logic, like, well, what about people that go to the military? If they kill a person, wouldn't they automatically go to hell? And then you ask a soldier that, and they're like, no, because we're doing it for a purpose. These people don't believe in God, so God, the, the, these like diehard, like super zealous religious folk have every excuse in the book to justify and make the Bible kosher and make it applicable to anything and everything in life, even though it completely, what about saying God's name in vain? What, what about that? You want to you wanna abide by, and so this is the same thing when I hear like black people try to defend or try to attack, shall I say, other black people for not upholding their version of what they believe righteousness is in the black community. And He's, he's not even founding it on, like, actual legitimate stats and statistics and shit like that. And I'm not saying you have to have stats and statistics every time you have an argument or every time you try to, like, make your point in your case. But he's already acting off of the emotional terms. He didn't respond to anything about what he said about the, the, the immigrants and having an opportunity in the world. He wants to go off the fact that Myron's calling black, Af black Americans lazy bitches and pussies and shit like that. Like, actually talk about what... Myron is saying there's opportunity here that other countries people are dying for. Didn't you didn't you guys see what the fuck happened to the to the Middle Easterns on the fucking the I uh the Iraqi or the Afghanis on the plane? Literally, literally hanging on and falling off of the airplane to get out of the fucking country. We're not doing that shit here. Yeah, we get killed, but it's like you know. They're getting killed by their own people over there. You know, it's, 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 pick your poison. Do you want to suffer? Do you want to put the grind, back-breaking effort in a third world country that has not even a fraction, a 20th of the GDP of America? Or would you want to put the same quality or same amount of work in and get a tremendously better quality of life in America? Pick, you choose. Over here. Right, but then you have the audacity to want to call uh, our, these, our folks here all these names, but in reality, you're actually speaking about your own father. I'm gonna ask that question again. If black folks are lazy, soft, they're the p word and they're the b word, 
brother, what does that make your father for tucking his tail between his legs? Man, I'm I'm sorry. I know this is a very tough word, but that's some bitch shit, bro. That's some bitch shit to go attack his father about that. Like you trying to defend black Americans, but you attacking his father on some shit. It's some bitch shit. Actually address what he's saying. Actually address the shit that he's talking about. That, stop just getting it. Like this does sound like he and his feelings on some shit. What does that make your father? Well, first off, the the, the example that you made about his father doesn't even apply. He's an immigrant. Myron is a first generation Sudanese American here. So once again, Myron said specifically a subset of black Americans, the people that have been here for generations. It's the it's because you can see immigrants who ain't spend no more than 10 years in this country be more successful than people who have been here for three, four, five generations. Now I understand why that that can be an issue. Now I'm, I'm like, I'm not here saying that, you know, like, like, I'm here to tell you guys that there's a specific and legitimate and systematic reason as to why people who have spent, like black Americans, my, like my family included, you know, are not doing well off at all. There's a tremendous amount of things that, you know, contribute to that factor. One of those factors being, <laughs> like my great-grandmother, for instance, in Arkansas, they owned a tremendous amount of land. Her family, the Brown family, and a bunch of other black people owned a tremendous amount of land after slavery days. They worked hard as fuck for until like like in the 1800s and shit like that and they actually owned a tremendous amount of land. But you know what happened? They didn't have money. Things started to happen. The white like Jim Crow laws was really chokeholding the financial system and so they sold you know what they did? They sold their land. A lot of the black families sold their land. And so like there's there's nothing there anymore. We don't own my family, I think that is maybe one out of like the 15 children 15 brothers and sisters that my great grandmother had that is down there when it used to be an entire like acres miles upon miles of black owned land they sold it you know and it's it, there's so many other reasons as to why black people americans are in this positions that they are that if you actually because i'm in the mortgage industry i i understand and i know i know this shit Right, land, mortgage, real estate, shit like that. That plays a humongous factor in generational wealth, and that's just one reason as to why Black Americans are in the position that they're in. But immigrants come over here, learn the fucking system, learn the rules. This is what this is what Myron says, and this is why I would even say I've had and I've said these exact same things in my debates with my own people and my friends and shit like that about this shit. We have all. The opportunity here. Just learn the fucking rules. Learn the fucking rules. Pick up a fucking book. Pick, read a book, read a book, read a motherfucking book. This is the, this is why I said lazy. Do you know, do you know what the fucking percentage is? What's the minimum percentage that you have to put down on the house to get an FHA loan? Do you know that? Can you tell me? What about a conventional loan? Do you know how much money you have to put down for a conventional loan? Do you? And you want to talk about how... All these things are coming against you and you don't have any opportunity in this world. Learn the fucking rules of the game. That, that's it. For real. And I'm not exempt from that. I'm not exempt from that at all. I try, I try, I try to learn the fucking rules of this game. That's how you succeed. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know this guy. I mean, his channel is doing pretty good, but that's some, some bitch shit, man. For real. Thanks. And running over here just to give birth to you so you can take a dump on the descendants of American slavery. I, I'll, I'll leave it at that because it really sounds like you're describing your father more so than descendants of American slavery, more than black Americans. But I, I'll leave it there. What, what you what you want to say, uh, Rob? Man, there's there's there, I don't even know where to begin. All right. So first and foremost, right, when it comes to these guys. I'm not even 100% for certain that Myron Gaines is a quote black person. Um, we're not even, we already know that he's not a, a, a. Here's this bullshit again, too. Let me say this one more time, too, man. You guys want to, like, these these black supporters or some shit, I don't, I don't know what to say the name, like, they so conveniently want to pull people's black cards because they're not fitting the fucking rhetoric that, that, they believe they should they should right mixed people 
all of a sudden are always exempt to get the black card or, or take the black card away. Whenever a, a mixed person does something amazing, we want to take the black community wants to take credit for it. But when they are not falling in line with what the majority of black America thinks that they should, oh, they want to pull that shit easy. But what about the black sisters, the mis the mixed sisters, right? You want to they're, they're black too. You want to talk about the sentence of slavery in the slavery times, 1% black blood, you're black. This shit is this shit is the new the older generation they're slow. I'm going to just say that like for real. I and I mean what I mean by slow is that they're slow with the times. They they they're trying to you got to catch up. You're dealing with a different generation. Here's the deal. The younger generations having a tremendous advantage over the older generations in this day and day and time. Only if the younger generation, like my generation and the youngers included, actually dedicate years of their life scouring the endless, the infinite supply of knowledge that is on the internet. And so you come with younger people now knowing a tremendous amount of knowledge and can pull actual resources and references points to completely debase an argument or or any kind of like stance like this, like this is, this is, they're old. I just, like this, that's what I got to say, man, is like they're, they're old. They're speaking on some old shit. This is some old mentality, but it's not to say that it doesn't have good intentions behind it. I think there's absolutely good intentions, but I think this is some old ass thought. Foundation Black American or ADOS. I'm talking about, I don't even know if he's actually 100% African. Um, if you watch and pay attention to the things that he says on a couple episodes, there's one episode where he says that the kind of woman he's looking for, he'd like to, quote, go back to the Middle East to find that kind of woman. So if you're going back to the Middle East nine times out of ten, you know what I'm saying? You're more than likely not necessarily African as in African culturally related to us. You know what I'm saying? Per se. Now, you, they say that he's from Sudan. You know what I mean? There's nothing saying that his family didn't immigrate from someplace in the middle east to to sudan anybody that knows anything about northern africa Su sudanese people are very dark skinned but there are some light skinned people there's a couple people in sudan running around looking like me you know what i'm saying and it's, it's because they're so up north it's the same thing in morocco like i had brought up french montana earlier same situation with him you know what i mean so there's that second i don't know if you guys know i don't know like what kind of content you guys watch on youtube but um there's a there's a youtube channel uh it's, it's the black authority but the account is called the business he actually did a video that went really in depth into talking about them but in the beginning of that uh those live streams that he does he talks about the quote red pill blue pill and then he names off all these dating coaches and one of the coaches that he names off is rollo tomasi you know what i'm saying now rollo tomasi has made statements saying that the white man has it the most difficult in the united states and that white men are actually quote the oppressed group which is actually the foundational structure of all of this male female gender war nonsense that you guys see playing out on youtube i know there's some people that like certain creators that they like and i'm gonna just leave that at that i say I, you know what i'm saying leave that for my channel because tony don't need to deal with none of that messiness over here you know what i'm saying but so like if you guys have ever watched that i don't think he did a recent video on the new stuff that they did because those dummies are doing something every week but the other dude, Fresh Prince CEO, he's a dude from the Barbados. You know what I'm saying? So now real quick, he is right about the red pill and Rolo Tomasi. The red pill really and why it's even such a popular thing now is because this has been something that's been specifically in, in the in the white and other race communities. Right. I told you, like the red pill came about because of pickup artists and a bunch of other men expressing their opinions and, and their experiences with women and, t and telling you what works and talking about the misjustice system and how it is the, dramatically unfavors men in the in the court systems. They put it all online, wrote to Masi, put it together, made a book called The Rational Male. The red pill came popular, bam, boom, bada bing. Now we're here right now. That's what happened. And so, yes, yes, just like how feminism started off because of white men and white women, red pill now today has come about because of the white community however that does not downplay or water the validity of the teachings and what what the red pill talks about and how it's applicable to all women i just watched this uh netflix series called singles inferno 
The shit that I've seen and I've learned and I know about a red pill applies even to Korean women and men. It it it's this is a universal language. This is a universal thing, you guys. This is the study of intersexual dynamics between men and women, human males and human females. That's what you're becoming a student of. You know what Robert Greene said? You have to become a student of human nature to understand humans. A lifelong student of human nature at that. Red pill, the right things and the right words and the right people talking about this shit will help educate you on the study of human nature in general. There are lots of people out here who just take the moniker and, and just spit you whatever, whatever they want out there. But, you know, you, you really got to do your due diligence. You got to do your time. You got you to gotta put the time in. You got to put your 10,000 hours and shit like that in. You got to understand this stuff. So, you know, he's not wrong about that. But uh, I'm going to see what he has to say about the first print stuff. And then I'm probably about to, to dip out of this. He, he says, says these kind of things, things as well. My thing is. You know what I'm saying? As a foundational black American, I, I I have respect for a lot of people that come over from overseas. I don't have no issue with them. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, when it comes to me and my culture, I have more respect for my culture. You know what I'm saying? What my grandparents went through, what my dad went through. You know what I mean? Even what my mom went through. You know what I'm saying? And my thing is, is that I don't undermine other people's cultures. If people have a cultural story, I listen to it. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I appreciate that. I'm a student of history. But at the same time, when it's time for our culture to be talked about, we have people trying to make laws to make it illegal to talk about those things because they are, you know, they make people uncomfortable, which is not our problem. You know what I mean? Then you have, they find these people who somewhat look like us that can be a, a token person for the population at large to gaslight them by saying ridiculous stuff like what Myron and uh, Fresh Prince are saying. And then third of all, it's just flat out not true. None of what's being said is true. And the thing is, is that if you feel that way, if you really have such an issue, right? What you need to do is stop assimilating our culture. Stop assimilating, I wouldn't even say our culture because that's a whole nother debate for another day. But stop assimilating and trying to do stuff that we do and trying to use that as your platform to boost yourself up. You had DJ Academics on there. You had uh, Asian Dial on there. You had uh, Kodak Black on there. I mean, all of those things are rooted in things that we brought to this country, you know. Uh all right, man, I'm about to end it on this because this is another, another thing right here. You want, like, oh, God. This is the issue, is that... You, you you can't even bring up the example of him using DJ Academics and Asian Doll as claiming them a part of the culture. DJ Academics is Trinidad. He ain't even from, from America either, right? Asian Doll, different situation. But at the end of the day, black culture, look, look at the people that we fucking hold up. Look at fucking Cardi B. She, I think she's mixed. She, I don't even think she's black. You know what I'm saying? And they want to hold these women as, as, the, as the top of the culture. You got Cardi B, you got fucking Future. Now I love Future's music, I'm not gonna lie, but we we fucking promote the, the fuckery. We uphold the fuckery in the black community. It's just a fact. You know, and we pick and choose. We the black community absolutely has got to do better. At the black community has absolutely got to look at itself and criticize itself. And to sit here and talk about we ain't doing nothing wrong is some fucking stupid ass insanity. That's it's insane. You're gonna continue to go down the same path if you're not actually looking at the problem spots. You have to look at the problem spots, and to look at the problem spots and uh, to address it is called critical criticism. And if you can't take critical critiques, uh, like this is why we say you're pussies, you're bitches, because if you can't take Someone critically looking at the shit that you're doing so that you can improve? I mean, fill in the blank on the word, right? Come on. I don't know if any of you have ever been a manager, ever been in a, in a supervisory position, and you've had to upscale an employee. You had to actually teach them, tell them where they're going wrong at, tell them what you can do. If you've ever given someone a, a report, there are some people that can actually take it and receive it well. How what can I what can I do to avoid this next time? 
What? Oh, th- thank you so much. I didn't know I was failing in that area. Well, what are some tips that you can give to me if you were in my position for that? Well, what are some things that I'm actually being judged on? Right? These are some questions that you can ask instead of just being like, well, you know, uh, you see, I, I, my computer just uh, went down and, and, and I got like, you know, I got all my, my children in the background. And blah, 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 blah. They may be excuses for you, but you're not think you're thinking about your fucking self and that's where you're losing. You got to think about the company. The company hired you so that you, you can do work for them. Now, they are su- occasionally supposed to care about you. You know what I'm saying? But you've got to do, you've got to make it easier for a company to vouch for you. you got to think about outside of your fucking self. And that's what people have an issue with. And then when someone wants to attack, not even attack them, but like critique them. Oh, you just hit their gut. You hit their ego. But anyways, man, that's what I have to say about this, you guys. Um, I think that was a pretty interesting video. I'm not going to watch anymore because I just... You know, I, I don't really see much uh, of any more benefit that I can get from this video. But um, thank you so much what you said for suggesting the video. It was actually really interesting. And, um, you know, I actually agree 125% with what Myra said, unfortunately. <laughs> but you know what? It's my unpopular opinion with this, man. Thank you so much for tuning in, you guys. I'll see you on the next one.